zero eleven no. The first more more you know for you could so do zero eleven no. Let us turn our Bibles to Ephesians one, verse three to six. As we turn to Ephesians one, verse three to six, let us briefly review our previous devotion. In our last devotion, we look at the first two verses of the letter. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus, <clears throat> grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In these two verses, we gain insight into Paul. He was circumcised when he was eight days. He was of the nation of Israel and of the tribe of Benjamin. He was super awesome Hebrew. He was an observer of the law and a Pharisee. He was a persecutor of Christians. And in spite of being a persecutor, God chose Paul to be an apostle. In fact, God explains in a nice in Acts 9 verse 15. Uh, that Paul was a chosen instrument of his to carry out God's name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. We see Paul suffer for God's namesake as he is facing persecution and writing this letter to the Ephesians from prison. And in spite of the persecution, Paul continues to exhort the believers in Ephesus, calling them saints and faithful in Christ Jesus, while also giving his heartful, heartfelt greeting of Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. This leads into our devotion for this evening. Let's have our English Bible readers start us off, followed by the reading of Ephesians 1, Moi, Ilon, Fayu, Kutoru, Seo, Ilon, and Samoa. Blessed be the God, Iga. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. The heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the beloved. Ia fakcai dia tua, iya. Ia fakcai dia tua. Mereka semua minta tua dia Yesus Kristus. Mereka faham dia mai dia tato dia mana lama. Mana dia hari lama, lama. Dia boleh lalui. Ona oke Kristus. Tapi kalau dia pergi mai dia tato, ona oke dia. Tapi dia di faham dia dalam lama. Praise God for reading this word, family. When you read these verses, we gain some insight into God, the Father, as well as a few spiritual blessings that God, that God blesses unto the saints in Ephesus. Paul opens up verse 3 with a blessing that is similar to blessings that began in our first <coughs> century Jewish prayers. They were commonly recited throughout the day. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word blessed is an adjective, a word that Paul uses to describe God the Father. In Greek, it is called eulogitos, which means blessed or praised. This paints a picture of Paul's expression of his deep respect and gratitude towards God the Father, because Paul knew that God and God alone is worthy of the description blessed or blessed, and that all honor and praise belongs to God. 
Paul catches this praise and honor to God in his first letter to Timothy. In the first chapter, from verses 12 to 16, Paul shares his uh, testimony to his true child in faith, Timothy, who is serving in the Ephesus. After sharing his testimony, Paul praises and honors God, writing in verse 17. To the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. As the blessed one, God is also the one who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings and the heavenly places in Christ. Well, why did God bless Paul and the saints in Ephesus? It was because they were in Christ. Amen. Paul gives us more insight into the phrase in Christ in a letter he wrote to the Galatians. If we could all turn to Galatians 3, verse 26 to 28. <laughs> Galatians 3, verse 26 to 28. Galatia Tolu, in on the fire for those for honor, so it is for battle. For you are here, yeah? for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord again for this word. Here Paul speaks to the Christians in Galatia. Reminding them of their new identity since they placed their faith in Jesus Christ. To be baptized into Christ means that they were identified with Christ. Uh, having left their old sinful lives and fully embracing the new life in Christ. To be in Christ meant that Paul and the saints in Ephesus <coughs> had accepted Jesus' sacrifice as payment for their sin. For us here, followers of God, praise God that we too are in Christ mm. because we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross to save us from the penalty of sin, mm. which is death. Yeah. Being in Christ also means that we no longer are, that we, along with Apostle Paul and the saints of Ephesus, are blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Every spiritual blessing refers to all the gifts of redemption that Christians receive by being united with Jesus Christ. Spiritual in Greek is pneumatikos. Here it communicates that the saving gifts of God are passed on by the Holy Spirit, whose personal presence throughout this time is the assurance of future heavenly blessings. Paul elaborates on what these blessings are in the, following, in the verses following verse 3. In verse 4, Verse Paul, Paul writes, Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, world, that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. The first blessing Paul explains to the saints in Ephesus that also applies to believers today is that God chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Wow, amazing. Praise you, Lord. And this points to the sovereignty of God. And as the psalmist writes in Psalms 147 verse 5, Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His, his understanding is beyond measure. Mm -hmm. It also shows that the thought of who God chose 
happened before the opening sentence in Genesis. In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. We were chosen before that very sentence. What an all-powerful and all-knowing God. This blessing also means that neither the saints in Ephesus nor us here in Peachwood were chosen because of the goodness that we do or what we've done. The blessing began with God's choice and it shows that God is the basis of the believer's blessing. <laughs> God is the basis of the believer's blessing is emphasized in John 6 verse 44 when Jesus declares to the crowd that are with him. And he declares this. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up on the last day. From this we see that it is because of God's choice that believers are joined to faith in Christ. Praise God for this blessing. God also chose with the goal that the believers be holy and blameless before Him. Holiness here expresses moral purity, while blamelessness expresses freedom from guilt of trespasses and sins in which believers used to walk. The next two blessings are listed, uh, found in verse 5. Let's have our Samoan readers read Faith <coughs> Dima. All right. Una tofia ia, una tofia ia to una mua, ina ia a pea ta ta ma fai mana, ona o Jesu Christo, e tu sa ma le pule tu mua a rofia malo. In English, having predestined us, ia, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will. Praise God. The Greek word for predestined is poritsu, and it means to mark out beforehand, to determine before or foreordained. This is another spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Put simply, God had marked out certain things to occur ahead of time. Predestination is the biblical teaching that God in his sovereignty chose certain individuals to be saved. Paul emphasizes this later in this chapter, in verse 11, writing, In him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Paul also wrote about predestination in his letter to the Romans in chapter 8, verse 29 to 30. He begins this chapter with a simple explanation of the gospel, moving into sharing that God's Spirit lives in every Christian. He also writes that Christians share in Christ's suffering and that God's Spirit helps Christians in the season of suffering. Then in verses 29 to 30, Paul writes this, For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. When we see from these verses that God had already marked out beforehand, what the saints in Ephesus would get. They would be adopted as sons, obtain an inheritance, they would be justified and conformed to the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. In verse 5, the saints in Ephesus were also blessed with being adopted as children by God. The word adopt, according to the Oxford Languages Dictionary, means to legally take once another's child and bring them up as one's own. Adoption is used by Paul to clearly show how Christians are brought into the family of God. Not only had God chosen the saints in Ephesus, he had predestined them to receive the great honor and privilege of becoming his beloved spiritual children through the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Paul reveals why God adopted the believers at the end of verse 4 
through the beginning of verse 6 when he writes, <coughs> even as he chose, oh, sorry, the end of verse 4, in love he predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace. <coughs> First, it was God's love for believers that allowed believers to become God's children. The word love used by Paul here is the Greek word agape, which is, in, which in essence is goodwill, the quality <coughs> of being well-meaning, kindness, and willful delight in the object of love. As a result of this agape love, the saints in Ephesus were able to receive these blessings. Second, it was to the praise of his glorious grace. God wanted us to praise him for his glorious, unmerited favor. Put simply, God did it for his own glory. His unmerited favor is the reason that our freedom was purchased with the blood of his son. It is also the reason we as believers as praise and continue to glorify God. Our final spiritual blessing that we'll look into this evening is found in verse 6. Let's read in English. To the praise, yeah? To the praise of the glory of His grace, by which He made us accepted in the world. Ina ia ia ia? Praise God again, family. The blessing here is that the saints in Ephesus were made accepted in the beloved. Accepted in Greek is karito, which means to be highly favored. Karito is similar to the Greek word for grace, charis. And gives the idea that the saints in Ephesus were made graceful and highly favorable to God through Christ. For us also as believers, because we are in Christ, <coughs> we are accepted or highly favored in the beloved. When God the Father looks at us, he sees his child in Christ. The blood of Christ has taken away the guilt of our sins, and we stand before the Father as perfectly accepted. <coughs> Praise God, family. We've seen that God the Father is the source of all blessings. That He is sovereign, loves His saints, and deserving of all honor and praise. We've read about a few of the spiritual blessings that God blesses the saints in Ephesus. The blessing that God chose us in Him. The blessing that the saints were predestined to receive something from God. The blessing of adoption to Himself as sons. The blessing by which he made us accepted in the beloved. All these blessings and the blessings we'll cover in our next division are only made available, available because of the saints in Ephesus' identity in Christ. Praise God that like Paul and the saints in Ephesus, we too here today receive these amazing spiritual blessings. We too have been chosen and predestined to be adopted to God as his children and accepted in the beloved not because of what we've done mm -hmm. but because of our sovereign God as well as our faithfulness and identity in Christ Jesus Amen. praise the Lord Amen. I'll close our division off in prayer and then we'll have another song to <coughs> lead us to the next part of the evening let us pray Lord we thank you again Lord for your son Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the payment that he paid for us. Lord, we thank you and we glorify you, our all-knowing God. Thank you that you chose us, Lord, and predestined us to be here today to learn your word and continue to edify you. Lord, we thank you that we are adopted as sons and daughters mm -hmm. in you, Lord Jesus. <coughs> and we thank you for your son again, Jesus Christ. Lord, as we continue our evening, continue to Help us to turn to you always and glorify your name. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, God. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.